What up? How you putting here? I'm just giving you a word of warning. This is going to be about a 35 to 40 minute video. And this was uh, brought to me by someone who sent me a private message. And I hope you guys enjoy. I'm just forewarning you, it's a long video. And I wanted to break it up, but the more I thought about it, I don't want to break it up. I want to leave it all as one video. So I apologize for it being 40 minutes long or in that neighborhood. I don't know exactly how long it is. I haven't edited it yet, but I'm going to start editing it now. And I hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned. What up, y'all? Pudding here. Hey, I apologize for the uh, fan noise in the background right now, but uh, although you, if you haven't noticed, my couch is completely done. And uh, this video is a, kind of a combination of things that I have done in the past, but I wanted to make it into one video. Um, I had gotten a personal message from uh, a lady. Her name is Kat, K-A-T-T. And she and her son are wanting to get into this life. And they're kind of wanting to know what they need to do to get into this life and what they're going to need um, as far as tools and stuff like that. So I know I've done tool videos. I know I've done RV videos and stuff like that. But I'm going to try to make a complete video um, on what it's going to take to be in this lifestyle. Um, let me first off say this lifestyle is not for everyone. Um, there's a lot of people that think that uh, this lifestyle is great. They get out here, they find out that it's not exactly what they wanted, that it's um, completely the opposite, and they don't like it. Um, and then they, they've sold everything and they've gotten rid of everything and then they can't go back. So let me first off say if you're really wanting to get into this lifestyle, you take and you rent an RV or you do some camping for a month with no power, no nothing, and you see how you like it. If you end up liking it, then you go take the next steps and that's either to get a van or an RV or whatever. Now, the first steps that um, I took when I was getting into this, because um, I, I noticed there were people living in vans, uh, there were van dwelling, and then there's people that lived in RVs, then there's people that lived in uh, fifth wheels, or let me say travel trailers, and I've seen people that lived in fifth wheels, I've seen people that live in cargo trailers, and to each their own. Everybody has their own reason why they wanted to do the thing that they did, and i got to clean off my glasses because my glasses are covered in spots. And it's a little rag that I got with my glasses, so... Um, in saying this, when you go out to get into this life and you're trying to figure out what kind of a rig that you're looking for or what you need, some of the things you need to take into consideration, and uh, a lot of people don't understand this, uh, well, number one is finances. Um, that's the first thing. Are you going to be able to afford to get the things that you need? Like, um, if you have a travel trailer you have to think about propane for cooking for your refrigerator um, and for the heater the furnace that's in your RV um, I don't use my furnace in my RV it's very un, uh, it's very uh, um, it's I don't use it um, I found out that it does work when I first got the RV the, the, the furnace in here or the, the floor heater whatever you want to call the damn thing it didn't work Accidentally, I left it on one night and found out that it does work, and there was a shit ton of heat in my floors of the, the furnace working. Uh, but I don't use it because it's not efficient. Um, I use a Mr. Buddy. I know people are going to give me crap and say, well, if your furnace works, why don't you use your furnace? No, because I want something that's more efficient. I don't even like using the Buddy because it's not efficient. Um, I want to get one of those ceramic heaters, um, and I forgot what they're called, but I have—I think I have one on my uh, on my list on my Amazon, my uh, uh, wish list or whatever you want to call it. But it's the ceramic, uh, the ceramic heaters that use a lot less propane. Um, a Wave Three, I think, is what it is. Is what I want. Um, I don't need a Wave 6 or anything bigger. I think a Wave 3 would be perfect for this rig, only because it would uh, it would heat up this entire place and I wouldn't have to worry about getting cold. And it uses a lot less propane than a Mr. Buddy. 
Um, so the first things you need to think about uh, getting into the rig. If you get into a, you want to find out, do you want a bathroom, and a sh excuse me, do you want a bathroom and a shower in your rig? If not, then you got to figure out, okay, so then how am I going to take a, a bath or a shower or where can I get one? Yes, you can buy them out on the road. Um, you can you can go to a truck stop and I think you pay like $12 or something for a shower. There are uh, campsites that have showers and stuff like that. I preferred to have my shower with me. So when I bought my rig, I wanted to be able to use the toilet and I wanted to be able to use a shower. Is that meaning that I didn't want to live this life? No, it's just that I had uh, certain criteria that I had to have met for me to in order to do this life. I wanted to make sure I had a toilet and a bathtub or a shower. Uh, those are two things and an onboard water tank. I have 35 gallons on board uh, and then I have I bought that new big tank that new big white tank that I have in the back of my truck. So I'd have two full tanks. I have 70 gallons of water if I need it. Um, <clears throat> but I'm hooked up to shore power right now, and that's another thing I was looking at too, because if I wanted to be into, if I had to go somewhere and uh, be in an RV park, I wanted to be able to plug in and have power, uh, but I wanted to have that ability to do that. Now, I know a lot of van dwellers don't have that ability, you know, they live out of their van and they do what they can. Now, some RV parks and stuff you go to that you can, you can rent a spot, um, <clears throat> Um, you got to make sure you know what you want. Um, is a van going to be big enough for you? Are you wanting to do... Um, and the reason why I chose a RV or a travel trailer is because of my decals. I do my decals and I wanted to make sure I had enough room for all that stuff too. If I chose a van, I would not have that room or I would not have the ability to be able to do that in that small of a spot. So I wanted to make sure I had the, uh, the room... Uh, to be able to store it and to be able to do it when I needed to or when I wanted to or whatever. Um, and that's the reason why I chose a travel trailer. Each person is going to be different. If a person has the money to survive on and they, you know, whether it be disability or they have a, a temporary job that they do every now and then or whatever, that is up to them what they choose. What chooses your personality? What is going to be efficient for you? What is going to work the best for you? Um, there's a lot of people I know that have vans. They live in vans and they are loving living in a van. They have, you know, they have, uh, they don't have a shower in their van, but they do have like, uh, they have a small cooler. It's a, like a 12 volt cooler that keeps their food cold. Um, they have a sink with water. Um, they have a, a small burner, you know, like a one burner stove that they use that they make their coffee on or whatever. Um, it just depends on what each person wants. But in saying that, when you choose, you have to choose wisely. Um, and you have to choose for what you want it for. So if you go out and choose something and say, I say, well, you know, I think an RV is better. That's my opinion. That's not... I can't choose what you need for your lifestyle, uh, and I won't do that. If you think that um, uh, a van a van would be better than an RV, that's your choice, and that's what you get to decide, and that's what you get to choose whether you like it better or not. I don't want to do that decision for anybody. Um, so... When I chose, I had to take into a lot of consideration. Number one, I am a bigger guy. Um, and I wanted to make sure, number one, I had a toilet and I had a bathtub. And then number, number three is I wanted to make sure I had room for my decals. Number four is that I'd love to do uh, like small building construction stuff for tool, you know, because I have my tools and stuff like that. So I wanted to make sure I had room for all my tools also. That's why I have a truck and a uh, our, uh, travel trailer. So that way I can haul everything that I need to haul. Now some people don't need that. They just need to have like uh, a minor set of tools, uh, a screwdriver, a hammer, um, a handsaw, and some other things if they need it. Um, I'll get into that in a minute. But what I, why I chose for me is because I have all these things that I can do, and I do them myself. Like you guys know, 
um, I built this thing right here, and then I built the little corner stand there. I built the couch. I extended out my bed, and then also I built this. Um, and the thing is, is when you do that stuff, you I didn't like the dinettes in the RV, so and I didn't want a dinette, so I completely tore out the dinette and made it my own. Um, when you get a van, you there's a chance you may want to make it your own. I mean, there. I know there are people out there. I know there's one lady that I, I'm good friends with that lives in Kentucky right now. She just bought a, uh, a Chevy van. Um, and she likes it, but I think, if I'm not mistaken, she said she, she doesn't want to change it yet, but she eventually wants to change it, but she eventually wants uh, a Ford Transit. So that way she can build it out the way she wants it. And I'm totally okay with that. And I don't care whether you buy a Ford, a Chevy, a Dodge, or whatever. You know, you guys know I'm a Ford fanatic and I love my Fords. But you have to buy what is available to you at that time, what is mechanic mechanically sound at that time. And there are things that you can do that will help you along the way. Um, there is a thing that is called Fixed, F-I-X-D, that you can get on uh, uh, Amazon, and I will try to put that little description right here. It's like 60 bucks, and you plug it into your vehicle, and it will tell you what's wrong with the vehicle, so you're not getting screwed over by mechanics when you're out on the road. Um, the tools that I have with me and that I have accumulated along the way... Um, I've got a uh, a ten ton a ten ton jack, like a regular car jack. I have a I think it's a four ton a four ton bottle jack in case I need it for the RV. And I, I kind of wanted to get another one of those. Um, and they're only in Harbor Freight. I don't care what anybody says about Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is a good place to get tools. Um, a lot of people will probably disagree with me and say no. Harbor Freight tools are are junk. A lot of their electrical tools are junk um, like their jacks and stuff like that um, I've actually talked to people who have bought, bought the generators from there and they love their their inverter generators and they're cheap you know it's like less than 500 bucks for a 2200 watt generator hang on needed that one um, their 3500 watt generators are good too you know I have a 5700 watt generator. Do I need that? No, it's too freaking big. It's too big for what I need. But I traded it for a gun I had. I'm not going to complain because I got a couple more hitches along the line. Because um, I've got my hitch that goes to my trailer that I put my load levelers and my uh, the braking system that I have. Um, it's the uh, oh god the anti sway so the trailer doesn't sway back and forth so I have I got I traded uh, hitches and stuff for that uh, generator and I can't I can't talk very well so you'll have to forgive me so uh, out here there's a lot of trading done um, and I think that's what the world needs to get back to is because trading uh, that's how they used to do it back in the 1800s they were the first original nomads because they traded for what they needed. If someone had something and someone else had something they wanted, then they would trade for it. And it was an even trade. And nobody felt like they were getting gypped. You know, um, I'm grateful to my good buddy Ty Kane, excuse me, that lives up in Canada. Um, he gave me six six volt batteries for my solar system. Now, I went out and I bought the 100 watt solar panel kit from uh, Harbor Freight. Then that didn't, uh, the 100 watts was not keeping the batteries fully charged, so I bought another 100 watt uh, uh, kit. And now I'm, I got 200 watts. It's really kind of bulky, um, and I do want, there's a, there's a thing off of Amazon that I have on my wish list that is the Dokio, it's 200 watts, and I'm going to post it here that I want um, I want that so I'm not carrying around all these freaking solar panels. I have all eight all eight solar panels, the connectors and everything, and I really don't need all that. It's just it's it's too big, it's too bulky, but if I do have it. 
Um, now, what I would do is if I ended up getting some money and I ended up getting the, the Dokio uh, solar panels and I could get into something a little bit better than what I have, then I would probably end up giving my uh, solar panels away uh, to somebody who needs them. Um, and it, that's fine. I mean, I have no problem doing that. Um, you know, I have my inverter that I got that I that I bought, um, and I I don't I haven't even had to use that since I've been plugged in because I'm in plugged into shore power, but I still have it in case I need it. Um, and some of these things you're going to have to have, uh, and people don't realize this. This is stuff that you're going to have to keep and hang on to. Um, but there's some things that I've went through a bunch of my stuff, and I got rid of a table. Um, I've got rid of a step ladder um, that was only like a, I think it was like a three foot step ladder and I couldn't use it and I gave that away. Um, and there's a bunch of other shit that I've given away too that, you know, you just, you, you try to, you're not going to be finished downsizing or upsizing or anything in your rig. You're always going to be adjusting everything that you have and you're always going to be moving things around and you're going to be like well I haven't used this so I can get rid of this but then you're going to find something else hey you know what I could use this and um, and I don't need this other thing that's just like when I when I first bought the uh, uh, this little scaffolding for 15 bucks I was like god do I really need it but I started thinking well I wouldn't need a ladder if I had that and I don't I mean, the only problem is, is I cannot get on the roof of my RV. But here's the thing. I don't want to get on the roof of my RV. I just don't want to do it. Um, everything that I can do, I can do from the ground or from that scaffolding. Um, I can't climb that well because of my knee and my back. And I'm not going to make an attempt to try to say that, oh, yeah, I can do everything. I can do this. I can do that. And I can't. My body has limitations that does not allow me to do the things. And that's what you have to take into consideration when you buy your own rig. If your body has limitations, you have to take that into consideration. That's why I took all the... That's the only thing that I think I messed up, I messed up on when I got this. Is I didn't take into consideration of my body limitations. But this works for me. My RV works for me. Um... I have a full queen bed in this place. Um, you know, I have everything I need in here, uh, and it, there's no, there's nothing in here that I don't. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there I will come across things that I don't need, and I have some uh, memory uh, memorabilia things that I had from my kids and stuff like that. I had a couple. I couldn't take everything with me, but I took a couple little drawings and I took a couple little knickknacks. Um, like, and I know I'm going to get made fun of for this, and I don't really care. Uh, my daughters bought me stuffed animals for my birthday every year, you know, when they were little. And I've kept all those stuffed animals. And so I brought them with me because it's what my daughters got me. So, you know, I keep all those stuffed animals in my rig. And they're actually on my nightstand right by my bed. You know, there's other things that I've kept. Um some small things, collector's items and things. Um, I could probably get rid of a bunch of things. I have a Dukes of Hazard uh, car case, die cast car, you know, the little Hot Wheel cars. I have an actual Dukes of Hazard carrying case that has the two layers of cars in it and it has a bunch of Maxbox and Hot Wheels in it. And I'm seriously thinking about selling it because I don't use it. I mean, I don't play with my cars. I, I just, I have it just in case I needed it for money. Um, I have to look up and see what they're selling for. I think the last time I looked up, they were selling for about 40 bucks, 40 or 50 bucks. Who knows, that could go up. Don't know. Something else that I do have too, is you see that Winchester mirror right there. I've had that. Um, I bought that at a, um, what do you call it, flea market. And the only other ones that I have seen are half the size of that. And I mean, literally, they're smaller. They're about this big. And this is the biggest one I have saw. Well, the smaller ones were selling for like 300 bucks. So I don't even know what that one's worth. But it's still got the original frame. It still has the original backing and everything on it. But I will never sell that because I love it. Now, if the end of the world hits and whatever you know it's not going to be worth shit and I don't care but 
for me, that is something that I get to look at every day and I get to enjoy looking at that. That is something that I really enjoy. So I will keep that. Um, I have a few Confederate flags. Um, I have my black one that says, don't tread on me, liberty or death. Um, there's a few things that I have in here that are kind of what they, people would call stupid items to have that you really don't need in an RV, and that's fine. Um, I made my own flagpole out of PVC pipe. Um, does it work the best in the world? No. <laughs> Not by any means does it work the best in the world. Um, when a big strong wind comes over, it bends. But that's okay, you know. When I get where I'm going, and if I get property or whatever, then I can find a flagpole, and I can put them up on a flagpole and fly them right. But that's a choice I made. But anyway, okay, so I'm getting off the subject. So anyway, when you're buying your rig, if you're not going to have a lot of things, if it's just going to be a solo person, and you want to get a van, you know, there's things that you got to consider. You know, gas mileage in that vehicle. Um... That's the one, and, and that's one thing that I messed up on this is uh, calculating fuel mileage with a full trailer on behind an F-150. Yeah, I get maybe uh, when I'm towing on a on flat ground, I get about 11 or 12 miles to the gallon. If I'm going through mountains, I go from six to nine miles to the gallon. If um, if, I, if I'm in the truck by myself with nothing else in the truck, and I still have shit in the bed of the truck. It's, it's almost loaded. I don't want to say it's full, but I have my tools in there and I have everything else. Um, I get probably around 17 to 18 miles to gallon in my truck. I, in, on some days, I can get even more. Like, I'll t tell you for an example. I went to Ehrenberg the other day. On my way there, I got like 14.4 miles to the gallon on the way there because I had a head uh, a headwind forcing me back. On my way back, I was getting 21, I think it was 21.6 miles to the gallon on the way back because I had a tailwind. So you got to take all that stuff into consideration if the wind's blowing or whatever. But if you're doing it solo and you're on a limited income, a van would probably be the best bet. But then you have to think about a toilet. And then I know you guys have seen this video where I made about the shitting in a bucket. I have no issues with people having to shit in the bucket. And I, I've made this plenty clear. It's Bob Wells that I have an issue with. So, if you have to have a bucket and you buy the, the bucket at Home Depot or whatever and then they have that the toilet seat that you can put on top of it and they have plastic bags that you can put on it and then you can use wood chips or cedar chips or whatever to keep the smell down or blah 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 that's fine. I have no issues with people doing that. As long as you get to come out and live the life like you want to live it and you don't have to be under someone else's footprint having them tell you how to live life. I don't care what you do. It's no big deal to me. Um, you have to figure out what's comfortable for you and what you want in your rig. Um, I have a little two, uh, I think it's a little burner, a little like, um, oh my god, I can't even think of it. It's under here. I think it's under here. Hold on. Isn't it under here? Maybe it's not under here. I thought it was under here. Yeah, it is under here. I got this from Mike's rig. And it's a little, it's a Coleman burner stove. I tried cleaning it up. It's been in the box, but you can tell there's dust back in it again. But um, it takes the little, the can of butane, I think, is what it takes to, to operate it. Um, and that's, and then, anyway, um, you, all you need is a little Coleman stove. You can pick these things up. I mean, damn, you can look on uh, uh, Facebook or what is it? Uh, the Marketplace on Facebook or you can look on Craigslist or you can look on OfferUp. And people have these Coleman uh, propane stoves for sale for like 10 or 20 bucks. They're not that expensive. Sorry, I got the I got the burps for some reason today. 
Um, I'm lucky that I have, and I wanted to keep that, but I'm going to end up giving that away because I don't need it and I don't want it. Um, it's nothing that I can use. Now, something that I do use is I have my cast iron skillets and then I have a Dutch oven that I'm definitely going to keep because those will, those will definitely come in handy. I don't want to get rid of that stuff. Right now, I have a stove in my RV that I can cook on. And I don't, I got dirty dishes, but um, I took that old countertop that was in my bedroom and I put that as a cutting board or slash covering my stove so that way I can set things on top of it. But I have my stove in my RV, but I don't have a, uh, a like a Coleman burner stove for outside, and I really want one. So I want to find a small like two burner stove, a coal, like a Coleman uh, propane stove that I can use in case I want to cook outside and I don't want to be inside cooking. Um, you know, there's just there's just a few odd and end things that that you'll think of that when you come down to it uh, that you're going to need or that you don't want to need. And this video is going to be very very long. This is already 25 minutes into this. Um, another thing that you know, you got to put into consideration the tools that you're going to need. And this is no joke. You're going to need a decent socket set. You're going to need a decent wrench set. You're going to need screwdrivers, Phillips and flathead. And then um, a, a, a cordless drill and a way to charge it. Whether it be on solar or whatever. But you'll need a, a cordless drill. You can still use screwdrivers and that's fine. They're not going to hurt nothing. You're going to need a small hammer. Um... You're going to need, uh, what am I say? probably a bit set, a drill set. Um, you're going to need drill bits. Uh, that's for damn sure, because if you're going to mount stuff, you're going to have to have uh, like uh, a way to drill holes through the wood so you can mount things that you need to mount them and where you're going to mount them and blah, blah, blah. Or you just get self-tappers, and the self-tappers will do it for you. But I've noticed on some of the self-tappers, they don't stay in like they're supposed to. So... Um, those are going to be some of the things you're going to need. Um, a lot of the things that I keep on my rig, whether it be tools or supplies, um, I know you guys have seen that I keep a bunch of screws, um, different kind of bits. Uh, um, I have, just for an example, I have this. Um, it's a star-shaped uh, head. I don't know if you can see that because it's blurry, but it's a star-shaped head. Um, I have a couple of these. One is, um, and I have a complete, two complete sets of hex heads. Um, but this is the star shape in case I need this. There's a lot of extra tools and stuff that I have that I really don't need um, that I do keep just in case. And I'm telling you right now, they've all come in handy. But I, I try to keep all my tools in my truck. Um, I do keep some of them here in the rig. Um, like the Patterson head. I try to keep one of those in my rig. Because all the, all the screws that are in this rig are Patterson head screws. Which means they're square. So, And I have to do that uh, in order to take stuff apart. Or to get into stuff. Or to redo something. And then what I'll do is I'll replace it with a Phillips head when I'm done. But there's still a lot of Patterson heads that are in here that are holding a lot of this stuff together. So that's one thing. If you have an RV, you have to take that into consideration because a lot of the screws that are in RVs are Patterson heads. So um, I'm trying to think of what else I need. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. This is going to end up having to be a two-part series. And I'm going to have to make that in the front of the video, so I'll have to make a different video saying it's a two-part series. Um, another thing you're going to have to worry about is storage containers. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but I have literally changed and moved to... Uh, I put all my stuff into storage containers now. Um, actually, you know what? Let me show you. Uh, let me take this out of here. It's probably kind of noisy for a minute, but I will show you what I've done. Um, it makes it a lot easier. Um, I have storage containers here. I have one empty one here. I have stuff in there, 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 there. And then, um, of course, you know I'm all about my canned goods. And then I have 
storage containers. Let me see if my light will come on. I don't even know if you can see. But I have everything in storage containers under here. Even on the bottom shelf, I have everything in storage containers. Now, the storage containers come in real handy. Now let me show you my cabinets. So, if you see, I put everything in these storage. I have my dish rags and stuff in here. I have extra plates that I can't keep in the cabinet that I keep here too. I have all my candle stuff here. Um, I have candle waxes, yes. I like my place to smell good. Um, I have some extra stuff in here. And then I have uh, two giant totes right here that I keep a bunch of stuff in. And then a lot of loose stuff that are here that cannot go into uh, a container. And then I have an extra light that I, I keep in here in case I need it. Um, I have extra of everything. Um, another thing, if you're going to be out on the road, something you're going to want to think about too, is clothes storage. And I don't, I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is one of these brackets that you buy. I think I bought this at Big Lots. And they have these little baskets here, cloth baskets, and it cuts down on weight. And I bought that, but I only bought two drawers because I roll my clothes up. My shirts are here, my shorts are here, and yes, I have extra clothes here. But um, everything that I have is in storage containers. And the reason being is because it just makes it so much easier to do things. Uh, you don't have to worry about things rattling around. You don't have to worry about um, driving down the road and having things fall out on you. So you have to think about storage. I still need to do that in the back room. <coughs> Excuse me. In the, the storage area back there. I still have to do that back there. I have to go through all that stuff. I want to get some a bigger totes for like my toilet paper and my paper towels and stuff. So that way I have um, I have totes for those so that way I don't have to rely on having things just poking out everywhere. I like to have everything neat and uh, done right. Um, that's another thing that you'll need to think about. Um, I've actually done that in my pantry. I put like a lot of my loose food or a lot of my bag foods. I put them in these, um, like these containers here, because they fit in that long cabinet. So I have food in those cabinets. Um, <clears throat> it helps me out. It cleans out. It it makes it so where there's more room in the in the cabinets. But if you're in a van, you have to go with cabinets in there. But you're going to have to go with smaller stuff. So that way you have room for everything. So everything decide, everything's going to depend on what you get for your RV, on what you want, and what your lifestyle is going to be like. Um, I have showed you examples of what my lifestyle is and what fits me and what I like. That's not necessarily me. That's going to be what you like. But, you know, when it comes to doing this lifestyle, like I said, you need to go out for at least a month and just camp and see if you can do it. You know, you're going to have to cook your food over a fire or even a, a small Coleman stove, and you're going to have to see whether you like it or not. You don't don't just jump into it because I've since I've been out here, uh, I've been out here for almost two years now, and... I know I'm living in an RV park right now, and it's probably not a boondocking, and people like, well, you're not really living the life. Well, you know what? I know that, but I'm in Arizona in the middle of summer, and I'm not, and I, I'm stuck here for personal reasons, and I'm not going to go into uh, specifics, but you guys know why, and that's okay. I have no problem with that, but I have, when I'm not here, like if I'm still here in October, then I'll go back out to uh, La Posa. I'll go back out to La Posa South and I will pay my uh, 180 bucks from October until April, um, I, or September to April. I have no problem doing that. I, I like living out there and that's fine. And I will go back to using my solar and, and that'll be good. Um, I'm kind of hoping that everything kind of goes through the way I want it to go through and that I can get property and I can start working on that. That's what my plan is. 
So, in closing, let me just say, I've showed you the way I live and the way that it suits me. But when you go into your lifestyle, you have to choose the things that you want, the necessities you're going to need, and what the way you want to live this life. Like I said, this life isn't for everybody, but you can make it the best that you can make it by making sure that you have the the luxuries that you want, whether it be a toilet and a shower. Um, that's something that I really appreciate having. Um, would I go to a van? You know, there's a possibility later on down the road I might do that. Um, but as of right now, I'm very comfortable with what I have. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that don't want this kind of, you know, that don't want an RV. They just want to live in a van, and that's fine. I, I, I totally commend them, and I have a lot of respect for people who live in vans. But the thing is, with them, compared to me, they have a lot more leadway than I do. Because if they're in a van, they can go a lot more places than I can. Um, they can fit into a regular parking spot, and they can be... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Incognito. So you can go into a big city and you can park a van on the side of the street or whatever you want to do and you're going to be fine. I can't take a 27 foot trailer and park it just anywhere. So that's one of the drawbacks I have for having a travel trailer. So yeah, I do envy them in certain ways, but I don't envy them in other ways because now I can park my home and then I can take my truck and I can go and do whatever I want to do and then come back at the end of the day and I have my house to come home to. Um, but that's my preference. It may not be your preference or what you want. Um, you know, a lot of people want these high top vans like the Transits or the, I don't know what the Dodges are called or the, the Chevys, but they're the high top. The Dodge Tran or the Ford Transit has a high top which you can actually stand up in and you can fix it out to where you can make it. My friend Ren, uh, she made hers out and it is freaking gorgeous. And she did all the work herself. And it is beautiful. Everything that she did in there, she did herself and it's all wood and it is immaculate and it's freaking awesome. I love her van. Um, I don't really know what else to say but you have to make your choice on your own of what you want. But if you need help along the way, don't be afraid to ask. Um, uh, and I want to thank Kat for bringing this up because um, I want to do what I can to help people get into this life. And I hope this video has been informative um, to help you realize that, you know, this lifestyle is a, you can live this lifestyle if you want to. But like I said, it's not for everyone. Um, there's a lot of people that just enjoy watching these videos that are, are home dwellers that, that just like watching them. And that's fine. I have no problem with that. Like I said, I love everybody and I don't have anything against everybody. And, and I've said it many, many a times. Yes, I want land. But the one thing you guys can understand, the reason I want land is because I'm also a prepper. Um, and if you don't know what a prepper is, it's somebody that's prepar preparing for shit hitting the fan. No matter what catastrophe it could be. It could be man-made, could be Mother Nature, could be whatever. I want to have property and I want to be ready in case shit hits the fan. And that's what I want. And that's fine. I, I will make sure that I'm as prepared as I can be. Um, I know you guys are going to probably give me crap for this, but it says in the Bible that all my people will be prepared. A lot of people want to make fun of preppers and say that, oh, they're freaking loony in the head because they're preparing, they're getting food and ammo and water and all this other stuff and they're getting all... No. It's us being smart. It's us being prepared for what is going to happen. We don't know if it's going to happen, but you know what? If it does happen, you know what? Who's, who's going to be the ones that people are going to come to? Because we're going to be prepared for it. Am I completely prepared? No. Am I prepared for what I'm about to face if I'm living in an RV? You damn right. I have um, I have 35 gallons of fresh water on board. I have uh, three 40 packs of bottled water on board. I have um, canned foods. I have my guns and ammo. I have everything that I need on here 
if shit was to hit the fan today, and I have enough to survive for myself for about, I don't know, two or three months. And that's what I would need. But I want to be more prepared than that. I want, I want at least, I want to say at least a year or two worth of food. Uh, I want to have at least, you know, 12,000 gallons of water, if not more. And the only way I can do that is to have property to be able to do that. Or have a well on my, on my, on my property so I can, uh, uh, so I can get easy access to the water. Um, there's just things that I can do more of having property. But that doesn't, that, that, bleh. That doesn't mean that I want to get out of this life. I just want to have property to go to when shit does hit the fan. So, I hope this video has been informative. Um, sorry for rambling a little bit in between and shit like that. Um, I'm probably just going to make this one big video. It's going to be a long one and people are probably not going to want to watch it. But that's fine. Uh, I, I understand that. But I'm not going to make it into two sections because if I put it into two sections, people are just going to be like, well, why, you should have just made it into one. Or, you know, you're not going to make everybody happy all the time, but you can make some of the people happy. So I'm just going to make it into one video. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, liking, my, liking my videos. Or you don't have to like them if you don't want to. I don't care. Like I said, I don't want to get monetized. I, I don't, I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this to see if there's someone out there that I can help or do anything for. So be kind to one another, love one another, and live life to the fullest because tomorrow is not promised. You guys take care, God bless, and remember, Puddin' 2020. Later, y'all. So put your drinks up for the weekend Cause them work days sure been creeping What's up? Is anybody gonna get tore up?